Have you ever been baffled about why your mixes sound, well, flat, lacking that oomph that professional tracks boast? Well, today we're diving deep into the unsung hero of punchy mixes, gain staging. Hang tight, because this one is a game changer. Now, before you go clicking away because you've heard gain staging before and you think it's boring or you think it's not important, I promise that this video has got some nuggets that's going to change your sound game for the better. There are a lot of parts about gain that we're going to dissect today and a lot of parts we're going to talk about. As always, if you want to skip to any of them, links are in the chapter markers below. Low. But first things first, let's start from the beginning. What exactly is gain? Picture gain as your sound's first impression. It's the initial volume control for a sound source, determining just how strong a signal enters your mix. But it's different than volume. Some might ask, isn't gain just another word for volume? Well, not quite. While both relate to the loudness of a sound or amplitude, gain sets the initial level while volume adjusts that level within the mix. Gain is the amplitude of the waveform before it hits any plugins. We can visualize gain in most DAWs by how high our waveforms are. Our volume is affected by the fader. This is the actual output that is after the plugins. Gains before, volume is after. All right, but why does gain matter? Proper gain staging shapes your mix, minimizes pesky noise, produces distortion, and ensures you've got ample headroom to play with for the mastering portion of your track. If you can get gain right, so many of your other parts of your track are going to fall into place. Proper gain staging will lead to minimal noise and distortion while we have maximal amplitude or output. Noise is naturally present when we record our sounds, and if our gain isn't high enough, when we finally compress our sounds, you'll hear that noise come through. Alternatively, if we record our signals too hot, we start to get digital distortion and clipping. This done subtly can be a good effect, but most of the time it's not what we're after. Take a listen to this now. Not a desirable effect. Something to note about clipping and distortion too is it doesn't just happen with individual tracks, it can happen to a track as a whole. If we open up our mixer panel and we check our stereo out bus, this is exactly what we want to be looking at to make sure that we're not clipping. Even though all of my other sounds are in the green, none of them are clipping, my output bus is still clipping. We want to be aware of that by giving ourselves enough headroom. In digital DAWs nowadays, I most often recommend to shoot for around negative 12 dBFS in your stereo output bus to make sure that you have enough headroom to work with. Now, I showed you some clipping and distortion earlier, but I didn't talk about how we measure gain. In any digital audio workstation, they use something called dBFS, which stands for decibels full scale. This is a new way of measuring loudness. However, loudness is a complicated subject. We actually don't have any loudness meters that perfectly replicate how we hear sounds. The way that our brain interprets the volume of sounds is just different than how computers do. Oftentimes, we think of transients or sharp spikes in sound as less loud than a computer would. That initial amplitude and burst of energy that a transient has often will clip or distort an output bus. Whereas with our ears, we wouldn't think of it as much louder than a sound that's significantly less loud, according to DBFS. DBFS is a great way of measuring loudness, but it has its flaws. Before, in analog consoles, they used something called VU meters. VU meters measured loudness over a longer period of time, so it more closely reflected how our actual ears hear gain and volume. Because a lot of digital plugins were based off of their analog counterparts, they were optimized to perform their best with a distinct gain or input signal going into them. In this case, the VU meter is going to be our best friend in finding that. I'll pull up a VU meter on an actual track to show you what I mean. I'm using a VU meter from Slate Audio, but there are free ones available all over the place. I'll leave a link for one in the description that I like to use. As you can see, this VU meter is being affected. I'm looking for this ideally to sit around zero. This is very different than dBFS. Many producers often compare VU meters to dBFS by saying if a dBFS signal is around negative 18, then it will comparably be around zero in the VU meter standards. However, this doesn't always exactly equate to each other. You can see this is around zero. I'm looking for a really broad average, but if I look at my meter here, I'm around negative 12 dBFS. I'm around negative 12, even peaking at negative 6. If I'd followed that negative 18 advice, it wouldn't be quite ready for the plugins that I'd want to put on it. Now, I wouldn't recommend using a VU meter like this for every single track, but on the tracks that you are planning on processing very hard, it is a really good idea to shoot for that around zero decibels on a VU meter. That is how plugins were designed in the past, and that is how digital reproductions of those plugins are designed today. The better signal flow that you have between those plugins 
wins, the better result that you'll get in the end. Now, there is an instance when I wouldn't use this, and it has to do with transient sounds. Because a VU meter is looking at loudness over a longer period of time, transient sounds can be way harder for it to detect. Let me show you how this works on a drum kit and why you wouldn't want to use this for transient signals. If we look at our DBFS, we're peaking around negative 11, and I think it's sounding okay. Let's add this trimmer, though, and let's make it now sit at zero for the VU meter. Even more. Now take a look at this. We're not even to three. We're not even to negative three on the VU meter, and we're already clipping 12.3 decibels on the DBFS. As stated earlier, it's not a great idea for using on super transient sounds. What's better is just to trust your ear. Okay, now that we talked about gain staging, why it might matter, and when it would be appropriate to use a VU meter or DBFS on your track, let's dive into actually how to change gain. Now gain can be changed in the DAW in a couple of different ways. Remember, gain is not volume, it's not adjusting the fader. This is for after the plugins. We want to adjust it before it hits any plugins at all. You can adjust gain by clicking on the track, going to the inspector window, and dragging gain up. This is called clip gain or region gain depending on what DAW you're using. As you can see, the waveforms get bigger. This is because the amplitude is increasing, and this is exactly what we want. This is probably my favorite way of increasing gain because it's so visual. The second method involves putting on a plugin. I can use this plugin from Virtual Mix Rack, but I'll just use a stock logic plugin instead. That stock logic plugin is called Utility Gain. I can just adjust the gain down or up as I see fit by using a combination of clip gain and then your first plugin in the chain being another gain plugin to get to those appropriate levels, you're going to find that your mix starts to pop in ways that you didn't expect. Now, something that the best of the best producers in the world are doing are going through ultra dynamic signals such as vocals and automating the gain so that you can hear every single word. I'll show you what I mean by hopping in the track. I'm going to put a gain plugin on these vocals and I'm going to take a look at the dynamic range that it currently has. We're pretty compressed already, but before it hits a compressor, we just want to be able to hear all of those elements. So let's go back to the beginning. We can visually see that some of these have higher amplitudes than others. To fix that, we're going to go A on our keyboard, so to open up the automation. And instead of using volume, if you use gain, that means we can adjust our fader later and it won't matter. I'm just going to take out this particular word right here by using my marquee tool, putting that down a couple decibels. And I'll go through this whole entire vocal and just make sure that we can hear everything that we can possibly want to. This takes time and it's a bit tedious, but this gives the best results. Let's just hear this first part. Really good, I can hear every word clearer now than I could before. Now if I put compression on it, it's gonna come through even more. And because I automated gain and not volume, I can still adjust the fader and nothing is gonna be changed. Really great. You should do this on really dynamic signals to get the best result possible, especially before compression. If you were to fix some of these problems with compression, then you'll result in lifeless, energyless recordings, and that's not what you want. You want it to sound natural and filled with the same chutzpah that it had when it was first recorded. Now, another way of changing gain comes with something that I've only really seen in Logic, and it's a really cool trick if you haven't seen it before, and it is normalization. Normalization usually gets a bad rap in the audio community. This is a little bit different than the normalization that you've heard of before. In this case, we're going to select all of our drum tracks. We're going to click functions up here and we're going to click normalize region gain. We can set in the parameters that we want to and we can change the algorithm as we see fit. This will be the peak and the loudness will be the overall loudness or LUFS, which is another way of measuring loudness. In this case, we're going to go for peak. Now, as stated earlier, we're looking for negative 12 decibels DVFS on our stereo output in our DAW. That's a mouthful, but hopefully you understand what I'm talking about now that you've listened to the rest of the video. This is going to go through each individual audio file and detect if this is going over negative 14 decibels. If it is, Logic will turn it down so that it peaks at negative 14 decibels. This will give us some headroom to work with and other instruments to add into the sound for the stereo out, and it's gonna save us a ton of time. Let's check this out. As you can see, each individual region and track itself has its own specific gain according to what Logic thinks, so that it peaks at negative 14 dBs on the stereo out. That's gonna be really great. 0.7 dB, negative 3.8 dB, hi-hats negative 4.5 dB. This is gonna really help us when it comes to our stereo out bus. This is gonna save a ton of time. And like I said, I haven't really seen this in other DAWs incorporated as seamlessly as Logic. Way to go, Logic. Now that we've gone through all of that, it's time to actually walk through how we will actually set up our track for proper gain staging. As stated a couple times in the video, our goal is to shoot for negative 12 dBFS on our stereo out. Now to start off, we want to go through 
all, every one of our sounds. We want to organize them. We want to group them together in like sounds. It's going to make things easier for our mixing process. I like to color my tracks as follows, and then I'm ready to go to work. Now to gain stage this right away, we're going to click on every track and just like what we did with our drums earlier we're gonna go to functions let's go into normalize region gain let's go into negative 18 decibels negative 18 decibels should be the perfect spot for the vu meter according to producers but as i debunked that myth it's not always exactly accurate let's try that individual tracks and negative 18 it's going to give us a good spot for our vu meters let's apply it now let's check our stereo out hearing some good things there. Now I'm gonna go through and just analyze parts that I think are a little bit too loud and I'm gonna do a rough mix. When I do this rough mix, anything that I wanna change from this point on, I'm just gonna add either clip gain, I'm not gonna to touch the faders at all. I want every single fader to be at unity. This is going to make my mix process so much easier and I'll explain why. If we already start off with our sound down here, we lose volume fidelity. If I make a slight movement here from negative 17, I barely move it and I'm up a decibel. If I'm at unity, there is way more control that I get. I can barely move it. I can go up 0 0.2, 0 0.1 at a time by barely moving it and my decibels get way more control. It's way more beneficial to throw a gain plugin on beforehand. So I'll go through, I'll do a rough mix of this track using gains and I'm also going to adjust the waveform so we can see them better. To do that, we're going to click on this waveform here and just bring them up. All right, cool. Now I have my rough mix. Every unit fader is at unity and I'm pretty much ready to go. After that fact, I would probably go through on my vocals and make sure they're sitting about where they need to be for a VU meter and they probably most likely will. Let me throw my virtual mix rack again on my lead vocals and just make sure that they're sitting okay. Well, that's about good for me. It was a little bit louder than it needed to be. And that is peaking at negative seven DBFS. And once again, not negative 18, but that's gonna be really great for all the plugins. And then I can adjust it after all the plugins with the fader or with an output gain of say a compressor. And it's gonna sound even better than it did before. So if we look at my final head count here, let's see where I'm peaking on my stereo buzz. Negative 16, negative 12 on that transient. Perfect. It's sounding pretty good. Of course, there are some better elements that could be mixed a little bit better. It's not a perfect mix by any means, but having this much headroom is going to give me so much more creative freedom when it comes to the master. I promise if you gain stage like this, your mixes are going to turn out so much better. You're just going to be able to do so many more things without introducing digital distortion or clipping. And that's exactly what you want. That's the whole point of this conversation. It's going to be easier to mix your song because your faders are already set to unity. Your plugins are going to work better because you're actually using them at the input volume that they were intended at, which you probably never even thought about before. Gain staging a song like this to get everything working right might take 10 minutes, might take 20 minutes, but I promise you the results that you'll get afterwards are worth it. There is no substitute for getting any of these things right. And if you didn't know about them before, it's time to start thinking about them. If you learned any bit of knowledge from this video, please leave a like, please leave a comment, please subscribe. May your ears be ever vigilant and your mixes be ever masterful. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.